大家好，在这几节课里，我们要看一看楚幺幺的故事。我们希望能够把这个故事的一部分讲给外国人，好让我们外国人更好的去认识一位二十世纪和二十一世纪最伟大的一个中国女科学家。通过这个故事，我们想着重传达的一点，就是让外国人知道。他的科研突破是如何造福世界的？尤其是救助了多少条生命这方面。另外，这个故事还有一个很重要的作用，它有助于打破西方人对传统中医的偏见。中医虽然在西方变得越来越流行，不过还有不少西方人还是认为中医是一个不科学和迷信。啊的一个医疗体系，或者根本就没有疗效。其实，屠呦呦的灵感就来自于近代的一个医书，而且这个是可以让西方人更了解到中国古人的医学手段原来是这样系统性，这样有实草依据和科学根据的。中医通过。把上千种植物详细分类，并细致的观察这些植物对人体的作用，其实可以实现不断的自我完善。而且，这些日积月累下来的实践信息，都在估计上有着详尽而系统化的体现。屠呦呦受到的是一个中西合璧式的一种教育，而他在实业上的成功，也告诉我们，中医仍然在为现代医学的发展做出贡献。Okay, now I'm going to read the whole text in English. Chinese discovery saves millions of lives. The disease malaria has dogged mankind throughout history. And it could not be controlled until the invention of the quinine type of drugs. In the 1960s, as the drug called chloroquine, which had been effective against malarial parasites, began to lose its effectiveness, malaria began to appear again in Southeast Asia. Every country in the world then poured a huge amount of human resources into discovering another anti-malaria drug. But these efforts were in vain, and the problem became a worldwide one. In 1964, China began to plan to seek a breakthrough from among traditional Chinese medicinal drugs. There was no great discovery until 1981, when Chinese scientist Tu Youyou gave a speech titled "Chemical Research into Artemisinin" at an international conference of the World Health Organization. The speech caused a sensation among all the delegates as they recognized that this was a lifeline for malaria sufferers. You must be wondering if this Tu Youyou was some kind of saint. Tu Youyou graduated from the Medical College of Peking University as a pharmacologist. In 1969, just as the research both in China and abroad into treating malaria had reached a dead end, The 39-year-old Tu, in order to solve this dire problem, took on the job as head of a research team. The first thing Tu did was interview veteran doctors of Chinese medicine and collect from them their experiences and methods of treating malaria. She then arranged all the old records of the herbs used in traditional Chinese medicine, focusing on those used for the treatment of malaria. She and her colleagues performed various kinds of experiments on hundreds of kinds of Chinese medicinal herbs, including artemisinin. However, the results were disappointing. Even those involving artemisinin, which had been universally well regarded, were less than ideal. But later, Tu found a relevant passage in a medical treatise by Ge Hong of the Eastern Jin Dynasty. Steep a handful of artemisinin in two liters of water, extract the juice, and have the patient drink it. This will cure malaria. 
Most Chinese medicinal concoctions are to be taken after being boiled in water, but Ge Hong clearly states that the water used to steep artemisinin does not need to be boiled and the juice is to be taken by the patient. This shows that artemisinin shuns high temperatures, which destroy its effectiveness. It needs a low temperature to work properly. There was much wisdom in that one sentence, pointing to a brand new direction for Tu and her research team. Finally, in 1972, an extract of artemisinin was found to be 100% effective against malarial parasites. How wonderful the ancients were, and how wonderful our country's scientists. Before the introduction of artemisinin to the market, there were on average 400 million people affected by malaria each year, resulting in no fewer than 1 million deaths. In 2000, the WHO recognized artemisinin as a leading anti-malarial drug and promoted it worldwide. From 2000 to 2015, the global ratio of deaths from malaria dropped by 60%. As the leading anti-malarial drug, artemisinin demonstrated that it had a great role to play. Beginning at the age of 39, Tool devoted her life to artemisinin research. In 2015, at the age of 85, she received a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, which was the first time for a Chinese scientist to win a Nobel Prize. How did Tool manage to attain such a great achievement? You probably have the answer to that already. You reap what you sow. If you don't give up easily in the face of difficulties, you may make progress and start to see a glimmer of starlight. As the saying goes, it is always darkest just before dawn. The moral of the story. Artemisinin research caused a great sensation in the medical world. Tuyoyo's spirit of scientific research is a microcosm of that of Chinese scientists as a whole. Her story tells us that the road of research is not an easy one. Knowledge is the outcome of dedication and enthusiasm. Only such qualities ensure success. Okay, everyone, you've just heard me reading the whole passage from beginning to end in English. Now what we're going to do is to look at some specific recitation skills and some recitation techniques. 我们把整个故事的英文版从头到底朗诵一下那么现在在这一块我们要练习一些松度的技巧那么今天我们要练习的一个技巧是两点第一个是我们如何去强调涂悠悠的那种坚持不懈的精神我们如何用我们的声音如何强调单词去强调他的那种坚持的精神另外一点我们也要学习一下如何用声音来强调一个关键时刻或者更清楚的说我们如何用声音去让我们的听众或让我们的观众注意到我们是临近或者走近我是越来越近一个关键时刻所以我今天选择的一个节选是恰好是屠悠悠得到他的那个突破性的发现的那个时刻那一段我读这一段的时候我希望大家可以注意到两点第一点就是我如何而且通过强调那些单词来强调屠
how I use my voice to indicate to the audience that we're getting close to a key moment in the story. In other words, Tuyoyo's breakthrough, her discovery. Okay, let's listen to the passage first. The first thing Tu did was interview veteran doctors of Chinese medicine and collect from them their experience and methods of treating malaria. She then arranged all the old records of the herbs used in traditional Chinese medicine, focusing on those used for the treatment of malaria. She and her colleagues performed various kinds of experiments on hundreds of kinds of Chinese medicinal herbs, including artemisinin. However, the results were disappointing. Even those involving artemisinin, which had been universally well regarded, were less than ideal. But later, Tu found a relevant passage in a medical treatise by Ge Hong of the Eastern Jin Dynasty. Steep a handful of artemisinin in two liters of water. Extract the juice and have the patient drink it. This will cure malaria. So, I don't know if everyone heard which words I emphasized to try to reflect Tuyoyo's persistence and determination. The words I emphasized were the words all and hundreds. Now, why did I emphasize those two words? Well, because that is the way in which her persistence was shown. She didn't just test one or two herbs. She tested all the herbs. She didn't just uh, check one or two records. She checked hundreds of records. So when we emphasize those words, we need to carry in our voice the sense that this is something that was a big task, a big effort, a big endeavor. So we don't just want to say, uh, she then arranged all the old records from the hers. We want to say, she then arranged all the old records of the herbs used in traditional Chinese medicine. And then when we get to the word hundreds, we don't just want to say she and her colleagues performed various kinds of experiments on hundreds of kinds of Chinese medicinal herbs. We want to say she and her colleagues performed various kinds of experiments on hundreds of kinds of Chinese medicinal herbs. So it's through emphasizing words like that that we convey with our voice more than what is just on the written page. We also convey her persistence, although we haven't used the word persistence in those sentences. Now the second point I want uh, everyone to pay some attention to is how I signaled with my voice the moment that we're getting close to the breakthrough. And I did that by letting my voice start to rise up in anticipation or in excitement. So, when I got to this sentence, but later, Tu found a relevant passage in a medical treatise by Ge Hong of the Eastern Jin Dynasty. My voice went up and up and up, and that tells the audience that this is going to be something important. When she consulted Ge Hong, this wasn't going to be just another disappointment, another failure. This is going to be something important. Hada. So in this chapter, I used my voice to emphasize hundreds and all. And then we have to learn how to emphasize this word. All. Hundreds. When we emphasize this word, we also need to emphasize the word. 我们也要反映他的坚持性，他的坚持不懈的精神。所以，我们说 all 和 hundreds 的时候，我们要让听众感觉到这是一个非常非常大，而且时间特别长的一个任务。所以我们要说 all hundreds of herbs。这个你在家里可以练一练。然后第二点是。到了，我临近了，他得到了他的那个突破性的发现。我开始让我的声音的高低
开始慢慢往上，这样就让观众意识到我们现在是临近一个非常关键的一个时刻。好的，我们再来呃诵读一下这个节选。The first thing Tu did was interview veteran doctors of Chinese medicine and collect from them their experience and methods of treating malaria. She then arranged all the old records of the herbs used in traditional Chinese medicine, focusing on those used for the treatment of malaria. She and her colleagues performed various kinds of experiments on hundreds of kinds of Chinese medicinal herbs, including. Artemisinin. However, the results were disappointing. Even those involving artemisinin, which had been universally well regarded, were less than ideal. But later, Tu found a relevant passage in a medical treatise by Ge Hong of the Eastern Jin Dynasty. Steep a handful of artemisinin in two liters of water. Extract the juice. And have the patient drink it. This will cure malaria. 好的，建议大家可以反复的去练一练那个段落，然后争取练习的时候，你夸张一点去朗诵，该强调的单词夸张的去强调，该停顿的地方夸张的去停顿。Okay, that's it for today's class. 好的，本次诵读课就讲到这里。建议。你听完后面的课程之后，可以再来回顾一下本节诵读课。OK， bye for now， see you next time。